Today is lesson four and we're going to talk about taking sharp digital photos. We are going to start by playing a game called What Went Wrong. So we're going to look at several photos and I'm going to have you take a moment to figure out what went wrong in each photo. So we'll start with this picture of a man playing with a baby. Obviously we can tell that the photo is out of focus and blurry. Think about what might have gone wrong with this picture to cause it to be blurry. If you said the shutter speed was too slow, then you were right. What happened was the shutter speed was too slow, making the action that the man was doing out of focus. So make sure that you are shooting um, above 1 60th of a second when you're shooting things that aren't moving and even faster when you're shooting things that do move. So a uh, better shutter speed um, for this would have probably been 1 250th of a second. Um, but I may not have had enough light. So what I did was I just waited for um, him to kind of come to a stopping point in the play and then I snapped this cute picture of him giving her a little kiss. Okay, the next image is of the circuit, Circus Ringmaster, um, and this photo um, is obviously out of focus. So take a moment and think about what went wrong. All right, you may not have guessed this one. Here it is. I failed to pre-focus my shot. As soon as I saw the ringmaster up on the pedestal, I quickly grabbed my camera, saw the image on my LCD, and took the photo. But the problem was is that I failed to pre-focus um, the subject. So I grabbed the picture before the camera had even found what it was supposed to take a picture of, and it never focused on the subject. So what you should do is when you um, grab your camera, look through the viewfinder, find your subject, half press the shutter button, and hold it until the camera focuses. Some cameras will have even a beep that tells you that it has locked the focus. And just as a side note, you can turn that beep on and off in your menu. So if you're taking a picture at a wedding in a church, you may want to turn that off. However, just day-to-day -day stuff with your kids, you may like to hear that beep just so that you know you have your focus locked on. Um, so once you hear that focus beep or you know that your um, object is clear in the um, viewfinder, then you want to continue to hold that shutter button until you see the shot that you want to take and then shoot. So sometimes I'll even hold that button down for a few seconds and wait for the action to happen that I want and then I'll take the shot. All right, here's our next picture a plant. Um, I took a picture of down in Florida. So my question is, what went wrong? I'll give you a minute to look at that and then we'll talk about it. All right. If you look at this picture, you can tell that the foliage in the background is almost in focus. It's pretty much, it's pretty good, some parts of it, um, but a lot of it is out of focus as well. And the main part of the flower that's closest to the lens is very out of focus. So in this instance, I have um, missed my focus and I've used too shallow of an aperture um, to get the whole plant in focus. And it was a tall plant. Um, it was probably about eight or 10 inches tall, this flower that stalked up from that base and, and finished up at the top. So I could have focused on the tip of the flower and got it in focus and let all the greenery behind go out of focus. I could have changed my aperture and stopped it down a little. Remember when we want to see 
um, clearly for a distance, we stop down the aperture like we're squinting our eyes. We close that aperture down a little. So it's possible that I took this one, um, you know, at about an f3.5, and I could have taken it maybe at an f8 or f10. So um, those are a few more things. And if I couldn't get it, um, which I couldn't, so I just took a picture of something else. So um, be sure to put your focus point right on the main subject. And if you still struggle, you might be shooting wide open or you're too close to your subject. So zoom out or step back and then recompose your shot. All right, we have a picture of a little baby. Um, playing with toys at the table. So um, take a look closely, uh, especially at her skin, and tell me what is wrong with this picture. All right, if you are guessing that it's too dark, you're right. If you told me that the ISO was too high, you're right. And if you told me that the photo is not even in focus, you're right. So if you look at the, her skin, and that's the shadowed part of her face, um, and then even on her arm and the table, you can see digital noise. And that's because the camera um, popped the ISO up too high for this picture. And the reason it had to do that was because she's got her back to the light, so she is being backlit, meaning that there's no light falling on her face, so um, the, it was a little too dark. And then the camera had a hard time focusing. So how could I make this better? Move my subject to a different area where there's better light, so I'll have less noise, and I can let my camera can focus better. So I just moved her back to the windows and took a picture of her looking out the window. Okay, here is another picture, and I wonder what you could tell me about this picture. So basically, the whole scene is blurry. Um, now, I did um, do this in Photoshop. Um, it really was a crisp photo. But what I wanted to show you is that sometimes people will tell me that when they look through the, the eyepiece on their camera that they never can read the numbers on the bottom or they never can seem to get their camera to focus. So something must be wrong with their camera or their eyepiece. And actually, it's probably not that. It's probably that they need to adjust the diopter so that they can see clearly through the eyepiece of their camera. So if you look at the little orange arrow, it's pointing to a little piece near the eyepiece of the camera, a little wheel um, that you would roll, and that would be like adjusting um, binoculars so that you could see clearly through them. Basically, you're just going to give it a little roll, and it will fine-tune how you're looking through, and you want to be able to see um, the numbers across the bottom of the viewfinder, and you want to be able to see that your image that you're looking at through the viewfinder um, are crisp and, and clear and that you can see what you're doing. Um, there's also um, a possibility that your eyesight is um, not as good as it used to. You may need to go to the eye doctor. So some people need to put on a pair of reading glasses to see the numbers clearly through the diopter, but then so that they can see the numbers clearly through, or I mean the image clearly through the lens, then they don't need the glasses. So everybody's eyesight's different, but just remember that that little diopter's up there if you need to make an adjustment. All right, and finally we have this picture. So take a look at this picture. Uh, looks like this might be downtown Seattle, and I did not take this picture. Um, so see if you could come up with a few things that are wrong with this image and then think about what we could have done or this photographer could have done to make this image better. Alright, so if you take a look into the sky, you'll notice a lot of digital noise. You see the little dots in the, 
the sky and even in the light areas of the picture. Um, so this photographer had their ISO too high for a night shot. Um, this image is out of focus and I'm guessing because there is good contrast between the bright areas where it's lit and the dark area of the sky, the camera could have focused. So I'm guessing that this person handheld the camera and I'm guessing that their shutter speed was less than a 60th, probably something pretty slow like about a 20th or a 10th of a second. So they handheld and had camera shake and camera shake is what caused this blurry image. Also, if you look at the buildings, some of them have very, very bright white blown out light on them. And remember what we talked about, when you blow out that white, there is no detail there. So even if this was a clear, clean, crisp picture, they still would have that glowing white light that they couldn't recapture any um, data or information there. So what could they have done to make this better? Um, well, for one thing, they forgot to use a tripod. So remember, do not handhold your camera with long exposures. You'll end up with camera blur. So peek at your shutter speed before taking your shot. Decide if you need to use a tripod or perhaps just rest your camera on a sturdy surface. Another thing that they could have done was try bracketing the shot. I would have um, perhaps set my ISO at 100. I would have let the um, shutter speed work however it needed to work, um, however long. So I would have maybe worked in either the P mode or aperture priority mode. I would have set a nice squinting aperture so that a lot of things were in focus, uh, maybe about an F16. And I would have just let the shutter speed set itself. The camera would set the shutter speed in that case. And it could be open as long as it needed to, as long as my camera was on a shutter. It could be a one minute exposure. It, it doesn't matter. So I would let the camera take that photo. I might even um, want to use the night mode. In night mode, a lot of that stuff will either, um, a d something will pop up on your camera and tell you, remind you to use a shutter, uh, I mean a tripod or a um, st steady surface. Um, and it also reminds you, you know, um, maybe to set your ISO lower, or it may set the ISO low for you, or something that you would want to keep an eye on. Because a li low ISO is going to keep that sky free of digital noise in the grain. And it's also going to make your image look sharper and more crisp. So, um, and bracketing, what you could have done with that, bracketing is um, a setting on your camera that you could take three images. It will take them, um, and all you have to do is set your camera to bracketing, take three images in a row. The camera will take one exposure right, just right, one exposure brighter than what the camera thought was just right, and one exposure darker than the camera thought was just right. So then you could either choose which of the three you like the best, or you could take it into Photoshop, and you could layer the photos together on top of each other, Remember, if they were on a tripod, nothing should have moved. So you should be able to layer all three photos on top of each other. And then there's some um, fun techniques that you could even YouTube uh, the videos on how to do this. But there's some fun techniques um, called HDR that you could learn to um, take out portions of the picture, leave in portions of the picture, and end up with a stunning photo where everything um, that's dark is supposed to be dark, everything that's in a mid-range is in the mid-range, and everything that's supposed to be bright is bright. And it would be a nice, crisp, beautiful photo. So anyway, I hope that you um, learned something from the What Went Wrong game. Um, and just to let you know, while we went over all of these situations, you learned about shutter speed, ISO, light, focus, the diopter, night vision mode, using a tripod, and bracketing. So those are great things um, to, to look into some more and learn about. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you next week.